Hi guys, this is Max Mahan on Android.com where we get on Android every day. Uh, anyway, I wanted to do a tutorial on how to process, batch process HDR uh, photos for time lapse and also how to make an HDR time lapse. I know a lot of you have been asking me for a tutorial and um, this is an HDR, well actually this is probably not an HDR photo. Let me actually go ahead and show you an HDR photo. All right, since I'm making Bangkok time lapse anyways, I thought I would figure I would use this time to show you. There you go. <clears throat> Here's the photo I took uh, in New York when I went met Flossy a few months back. Uh, this is actually an HDR photo made from three different photos. If you want to make some cool photos, then you can do this. Now, you really won't be able to do this on Android. Not really. I mean, if there's a way in the future, I'll um, tell you how and I don't really recommend it the camera technology is not that great but I took these using uh, my Canon uh, 60 you take three different photos so here's a normal photo and this is underexposed and this is overexposed and this will repeat uh, normal underexposed uh, overexposed right so you'll have to take these photos uh, every camera has a way to do this Sony Canon uh, I actually use GH4, Sony, and my Canon. Uh, for Sony's, there's an app called Time Lapse app. You'll need to buy that and install it on something like an A6300, and then set it to manual mode to take three shots. Now also, uh, I do prefer using raw photos. Raw photos will give you higher quality in the end. Uh, since you have more to work with, you can go ahead and you know, tweak it more. So I do recommend using raw. These are all CR2 files, which is raw. Uh, these files are all like 22 megs each. All right, once you have taken those photos, put them all in one directory and change the alignment so you can see three photos and make sure they all align, all right? These all align. I'm gonna get rid of this last one here I don't need. All right, they all align. Normal, underexposed, overexposed. Now on how to shoot that with your Sony, Canon, Nikon camera, go ahead and Google it. That's not part of this tutorial. I'll have another tutorial on that, but this is really focused on how to process uh, those HDR. Now this is different from on-camera HDR processing. That processing is usually limited to only 1080p. Um, you can do 4K on something like GH4, but you don't have much control. If you wanted to make cool 4K time lapses with the virtual uh, zooming, panning, you know, then you can use this method to get uh, the full resolution out of it. So this is a 24 megapixel photo. Uh, 4K is only maybe fits a little box inside this 24 megapixels. So I have some extra room to crop out uh, and stuff like that. So one of the best ways to process HDR photos uh, is Photomatix Pro. Now this one, you can try the free version, which has a watermark, but uh, once you like it, you can purchase it for a hundred bucks, totally worth it. I bought this a few years back. I use it all the time for you know single HDR, multiple HDR. You can also use Lightroom or Photoshop, but this is more intended for just HDR, so which is nice. So let me go ahead and load up Photomatix uh, Pro here. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and load uh, bracketed photos. And we're gonna go ahead and go to browse. And we're gonna go into our HDR folder and we're gonna go ahead and choose, uh, use the shift key and choose the first uh, three files. <coughs> <coughs> Hit open, okay. All right, alignment settings. Uh, if you did not use a tripod, this will also crop and align images, which is very nice if you're using handheld. But I use the tripod. I normally recommend tripod. Also, you can reduce noise um, on underexposed images or all source images. All right, since I took this during the day, I'm probably not gonna use this. This may be useful uh, for night. Uh, reduce chromatic aberrations, that could help. White balance as shots, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and align and merge to HDR. And this will create a basic HDR image. So this is the default HDR image, right? The basic, uh, the basic HDR image looks pretty good. Now, when you take an HDR image on your Android phone, uh, it will actually process it in its own way and will give you an HDR photo. But this already looks better than anything taken on a smartphone. Uh, that is why I use my Canon 60. 
or my Sony a6300 for taking photos. All right, so you can go ahead and choose all these different uh, styles, right? There's these presets, or you can go ahead and set your own preset, um, but these do help. Painterly 2. Uh, Painterly, I like the Painterly looks, sort of gives that surreal effect. We'll go with something basic. Paint, paint, Painterly 2 is sort of brings out the skies really well. I like the colors also down here. Now you can go ahead and play with the strength here. If you don't want too much HDR, um, you can go ahead and play with this. So I'm gonna actually bring it down a little bit. I'm gonna bring it down to about 50. And also color saturation. Also, you can go ahead and play with this to get the saturation, amount of saturation you want. Put it a little bit about 75. Tonal compression, All right? I'm gonna actually bring this up. Details, contrast, <clears throat> you can go also go ahead and play with that. All right, there's also exposure fusion, all right, which will give you a different look and you can play with that also. But I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, Painterly 2, uh, apply the effects I want. Lighting effects, um, you can also turn that on. I'm gonna actually turn that off. Oh, should I put it on? With it on and off. Okay, I'm, I'm going to leave the lighting effects off. That might be more useful uh, for night shots. There's also more uh, options here. You can play with advanced options. Micro smoothing. Right, once you have established the look you want, um, go ahead and go to the preset here and save the preset. And I'm going to save this as new preset. All right, name it whatever you want. And I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. Now we're just doing a single ACR photo and we're gonna go ahead and batch uh, process the rest of them after this. So here's uh, my final uh, processed ACR image with the look I want. Um, you can do additional contrast, uh, add contrast, color. If you wanna make this uh, dome yellow pop out more, you can perhaps add a little bit more of this. There we go. Sort of give that a uh, little bit more realistic look. Sort of kind of make it pop out. Uh, if you want the greens down here to pop out, you can also bring that up a little bit. All right, and you can go ahead and play with this. But I'm just gonna leave it at, uh, I'm just gonna leave it at zero. Here. Um, you can also add a little sharpening if you want mild sharpening. Let's see what happens if we add uh, strong sharpening. All right, that seems a little too much. So I'm gonna just do mild sharpening here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add mild sharpening, hit done. And here's my final ACR image. Now, if you're done with this, um, you can go ahead and close out, save it. Let me go ahead and save it real quick. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like, the final image. And here's my ACR uh, process photo. Looks pretty fun and cool, right? All right, so next I'm gonna show you how to batch process them. You'll notice that I have, uh, here we go. I have 1300 files, I right? Divide by three, that's about 600, uh, HDR photos that I can make from this much files. That's about five seconds of video, which is which is my target uh, time. But you need a lot of storage to make five seconds of ACR um, time lapse. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and batch uh, process these bracketed photos. Um, go ahead and select the folder. Uh, mine is here under ATR one. This is where I have all the files, which is this directory here. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, merge three images at a time. Now you can make an HDR photo with uh, even more than three files. Then you can go ahead and choose four or five, even up to 17, wow. All right, um, next go ahead and choose a custom location or I, I like to do subfolder within source folder. This will just make a new folder for the process files. And also um, you can save the files as 8-bit TIFF, 16-bit TIFF or JPEG. JPEG should work fine. Uh, image quality 100. 
Also, um, you can create 32-bit unprocessed merge file if you want, but uh, if you don't need it, then you don't really need to do it. So I uncheck it because it'll just take longer. Also, this is where you can go ahead and set the style you just made on the first photo. So go to set and go ahead and go ahead and go all the way down to the new style we made, which is the new preset. Go ahead and hit add. Um, and you can also, uh, and then go ahead and hit OK. And also image alignment. If you didn't use a tripod, um, noise reduction. All right, ghost removal. If you have like stuff that you need to remove, you can also try that option. Uh, finish with more contrast, maybe a little mild sharpening. That's pretty much it and I'm gonna hit run. And this will start processing three images and make it into an ACR JPEG image. Basically what we're doing um, is doing what the camera does. Like let's say you take a photo with a Nexus 6P in ACR mode. It'll actually do that within the smartphone. Now the good thing with this process is that we'll get a much higher a quality ACR image in the end uh, with full resolution. Also, you'll be able to customize uh, the ACR image just the way you want it. You can make it painterly, you can make it realistic, um, you can make it unrealistic, all that good stuff. All right, this should take like 30 minutes uh, to an hour because I have a lot of photos, but you can actually watch the results as this is happening. So it already processed two photos now. Let's go ahead and take a look. So I'll be back when it processed all these photos and we'll make it into a, an ACR time lapse. All right, guys, um, when it is done, you'll have your photos, but I'm gonna actually stop because I have uh, around 300 shots, which is more than what I need, which is about 10 seconds of video. I did the calculation wrong. But here it is, uh, I've got, all the HDR shots here, and you'll see that I've got a nice HDR time lapse ready to be made. All right, in this next section, we're gonna go ahead and make the actual time lapse. So, for making time lapse, I do highly recommend using Adobe After Effects. All right, okay, we're gonna go ahead and open a new project. Let me go ahead and save this as. Bangkok ACR, so I know this is the ACR version. And the, you'll need to make a new composition. All right, I'm gonna call it HDR1. And if you wanna do 4K, set the width to 3840 by 2160, all right? For duration, um, you can do however long it's gonna be. My time lapse is not gonna be longer than five seconds for each of the portions. So I'm gonna do that, hit OK. Right, and also project settings, uh, set the color depth to 32 bits. And next we're gonna go ahead and import the files. Go to import file. And we're gonna go ahead and find the directory. All right, it's under time-lapse. Oops, time-lapse Bangkok date, no. Yeah, Bangkok day two, 100. I'm gonna go to my HDR one. There's my new directory with all my HDR photos. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the first photo here. And I'm gonna choose JPEG sequence, force alphabetical order uh, and import. And that will import all the files in there. And you can see it's a total of 5.6 gigs. I'm gonna drop this down into my new composition. And now I will be able to actually resize it. So. The good thing with making your own ACR time lapse is that now you can you have all of this space to use. Uh, this is in full resolution, so if you want it, you can have a virtual zoom going like this or whatever. But I actually want most of this in the uh, video, so I'm going to actually shrink it down, scale it down to uh, about that much, maybe a little bit more. Now hold down shift while you do it. If you don't hold down shift, it's going to mess up the aspect ratio. So go ahead and hold down the shift and then it'll keep the aspect ratio while you do it. Uh, let me go ahead and resize. Now for this shot, uh, I want more of the skies coming out. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to start somewhere in the middle. Oh, let's start at the bottom here and set it there. Now, if you hit the P key, 
that'll give you position. I just hit the P key on the keyboard. Go ahead and click there. That will set the position, all right, for the first second. And then I'm gonna go all the way down to the last frame here, about the last frame. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my cursor keys to move uh, the actual time lapse. So I'll be able to add a nice virtual zoom going from the bottom to up. And also another note, you will want to resize this. Whoops. Hold on. You'll need to resize this uh, bar here. Oops, sorry, that's not it. Go to the end here. Make sure you resize this bar, hold the shift key down and then size it exactly the size. This is the size of your video. And you can go ahead and zoom in or zoom out. And now you can go ahead and scrub through all of this. So let me just go ahead and hit the space key. And you can see there's a little bit of movement. That's when I was setting up the tripod and after that it's gone. And you'll see my time-lapse uh, replaying really slowly here. But don't worry about that, it's scrubbing through. And I don't usually actually go watch the whole thing because, you know, as long as all the shots are good, uh, you're good to go. But you can see a nice time lapse going. Let me go ahead and do that again. That's what it's going to look like. Going to go st start going from the bottom to up. Now let's go ahead and export this. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and add to media encoder queue. I like using the media encoder because this is a separate application. And it won't, you can do other things. You can work on new projects while it's rendering. If you have a powerful computer, um, you will be able to render while editing more videos. I'm using an MSI Ghost uh, GS60 4K laptop, which is pretty nice. Uh, I got it last year, it's an Intel i7. Pretty good laptop. Even this one, it lags a little bit, but um, you know, for a laptop, this is one of the uh, lightest ones you can get. All right, give it a second. Now you can do a preset. I'm gonna actually set this um, to my preset, which is a 4K, all right? What you usually can do is go to match source high bit rate, all right? And don't use these bit rates. Raise this to like 50 and 55, all right? That is my setting. So my setting for 4K 55 megabits per second, that's how I set it. And you can set, uh, once you have those set, you can set, save the preset here so you can use it later like I did here. And also you can go ahead and set the uh, output directory. So I'm gonna set it to my usual uh, high on Android out directory. And I'm just gonna name it HDR1, hit okay, save. Everything looks good, it's gonna be 75 megabytes, hit okay, hit start. And that's pretty much it. And you can go ahead and close out of After Effects. That will free up some more memory for rendering. And you can see for a five, 10 second video with my computer, it's gonna take about 17 minutes. All right, 16 minutes. It'll go a little faster, depending on how, how big your video is. Uh, once this is done, uh, we'll take a look at the actual time lapse. And here is our HDR. We've got the virtual zoom uh, with the construction going there. A lot of cars, a lot of action. Nice skies, um, looking pretty good. I would say we have a successful HDR. And that's how you make an HDR time lapse, 4K. Hi, click here to subscribe. Click here to subscribe. 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 Subscribe.